The Weekly Quest is sponsored by NerdFuel. Hey, what's up, Questers? Happy weekend and welcome to The Weekly Quest. There are timestamps down in the description if you're looking for something specific. Let's do this. First off, let's go ahead and get the reason you are here out of the way. Thanks to Reddit user Interstellar Pizza, we now have the first Oculus Arena footage from the Oculus Quest version. There isn't any sound and this is alpha gameplay, but so far it's looking pretty good. According to the original poster, the game runs very well already, with no noticeable latency issues, and it sounds like they're going to be inviting a whole ton of more people in next week. So hopefully, I'll be able to share even more if I can get into the alpha. If you want to sign up for the alpha, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm just going to let a little more of this video play so you can see more of the gameplay. I'm going to stop talking right now. I mean, I can talk if you want me to, but it would be just to cover the footage, so... Okay, sorry, I'll shut up. Oculus released the brand new Quest update this week to update 15, and it's already started rolling out. Some people have gotten it already, I have not, and there are quite a few new changes. First of all, we finally have on-demand pass-through as an experimental option. This allows you to activate the inside-out tracking cameras at any time without leaving the Guardian area by double-tapping the side of the headset. I'm not sure what Voodoo allows the headset to know when this happens, whether it's sound or what, but once activated, it does limit the amount of steps you can take outside of where you're standing for whatever reason. It's still experimental, but at least we have it now. Also added in the new update was the huge user interface update. This totally changes the way that the Quest menu system looks, and it also adds in the new multi-tab function for Oculus Browser. On top of all that, the keyboard now has a text-to-speech option you can use. Quest Link got some updates to make it better, including the ability to test your connection during setup, and you can now join a party from the notification on your phone from the Oculus app, and then you'll be part of the party once you put on your headset. I'll leave a link to the release notes in the description if you want to check them out. Even though it's not specifically Quest related, Valve disrupted the entire VR world this week by releasing Half-Life Alex for PC VR. I have played the game using Virtual Desktop, which had a beta update this week as well to run the game even better, and it works amazingly well. Plus, the game itself is the most polished and well-done VR game to date, with about an 8 to 10 hour story if you rush through it. The interactions in the game, the story, let alone how beautiful it looks, everything about it is awesome, and if you have the ability to play PC VR games on your Quest, I highly recommend it. If you've been waiting for real VR fishing to add Spotify support, the update is now live. The game now includes a resizable pop-out menu that also allows you to play Spotify and even watch YouTube videos while you're fishing. That means you can catch up on all those BMF videos you've missed while you're relaxing and catching some fish. Time for a sponsor break. If you're looking for a morning pick-me-up or heck, any time of the day, I'm not judging, check out Nerd Fuel. Nerd Fuel makes smooth and delicious small batch coffee, both whole bean and ground. This ain't your daddy's coffee either. With flavors like maple bacon and apple cinnamon, you'll be ready to jump back into your game and kick some tail or just take on the day. Nerd Fuel is all about making the world a better and nerdier place. So they donate 20% of all profit to charity. Plus, with their nerd guarantee, if you don't love your coffee, they'll send you another bag on them. So check them out at nerdfuel.com. VoxVR got a brand new update this week in the form of a brand new DLC pack. The DLC includes an hour of new workouts and music, and includes brand new music like dubstep and electropop. The DLC launched just yesterday on the Quest, and it's $9.99. Colorspace, the awesome VR coloring book app, also had an update already this week, and they added in the ability to even further customize your colors with a brand new Infinity Color update. This update allows you to choose any color you can imagine to paint the world around you in color space. If you haven't checked out the game yet and you're looking for a way to relax and just hang out in VR, then this is a great way to do it. Arizona Sunshine also saw a new DLC drop this week called Dead Man that acts as a prequel to the original game story. It adds an additional level, although I have heard that it's fairly short, but the price is only $249, so you can't really complain for that price. I'll be jumping in later today with Gamertag VR to check it out. This week we saw three brand new releases. 
Down the rabbit hole, the Wonderland diorama-style puzzle adventure game released, The Room of VR, A Dark Matter, which is my favorite Oculus Quest game right now, came out, and also B-Team, which is a very odd game, came out as well. What's coming out next week, you ask? Just my single most anticipated Oculus Quest game right now. Lies Beneath launches on the Quest next week, and I am super thrilled about it. Well, that's all the news and updates I have for you this week. Out of all the updates and new releases this week, which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to get the most out of your Oculus Quest, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. You can also check out more of my Oculus Quest videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend and happy questing.